section 26.8, the thin lens equation and the magnification equation. So this is an equation that looks very familiar because we've seen it before, right? If one over DO plus one over DI, one over the object distance plus one over the image distance is equal to one over F, one over the focal length. It's the exact same as what we saw with mirrors. It's true for lenses as well. So DO, as a reminder, is the object distance. DI is the image distance, and F is the focal length. That's the distance from the focal point to the lens, and that's symmetric on either side of the lens. So that'll be true for either side. Similarly, the magnification is the ratio of H1 to HO, and that ratio is also equal to negative DI over DO. So that's handy to note. Now, someone asked a question on this, and I'm really glad they brought it up because I sometimes forget to mention it. But when you're drawing this ray diagram, how do you know how tall to draw the heights? Well, it turns out it's somewhat arbitrary. The ratio, though, will stay constant. So what you want to do is pick a reasonable height for an object, and then the image, based on that, will be whatever the magnification is. So if it's a magnification of two, and you pick an object height that's two centimeters, magnification of two, the image is now going to be four centimeters. It'll be twice as big. And so that relation will hold, and that's where the table and that we saw in the last uh, video, the last slide is really useful because if you know what the image is going to be like, then you'll be able to draw a suitable height for the object. If you know your image is gonna be bigger than your object, you probably don't want to draw your object super big or your image is going to be off the charts. But if you know your image is going to be really small, you don't want to draw a tiny object or else your image will be really small and hard to see. But all that to say, when using these equations, uh, you can figure out the values for them and get some numerical checks in addition to those ray diagrams. Now, just as we had for mirrors, there are some sign conventions for lenses, and they're very similar to what we had with mirrors. So the focal F is going to be positive for a converging lens and negative for a diverging lens. The object distance is said to be positive if the object is to the left of the lens. And here, when we get into two lens systems, it will be possible for the object to be to the right of the lens and be negative. That's pretty weird though. In most cases, the object distance will be positive. The image distance is positive for an image formed to the right of the lens, which is a real image. And it's negative for one that's formed to the left of the lens, our virtual image. So our left and right have switched. And that's just because with mirrors, the light bounced off the mirror and went back the way it came. But with lenses, the light is passing through and so the real is always where is the actual light ray. So if the light is passing through, real is going to be on the right side. And then magnification is, as before, positive for an upright image, negative for an inverted image. So those are really useful conventions. You can write this on your crib sheet as well, because that's information that you have to put in when you're using the magnification and thin lens equations. All right, now what if we have those lenses in combination? Section 26.9 gets at that idea. And the key takeaway to be able to solve uh, lens, two lenses in combination is that the image produced by one lens will serve as the object for the next lens. So let's look through this example very briefly and then we'll see an example that will be a little more thorough. So we have the object here and then one lens of say an objective, like if it's a microscope. Uh, and so then that, or a telescope. Yeah, so then the object passes through the first lens and creates a real image. Cool, it's now created an image. This image then becomes the object for lens number two. And the eye looking through lens number two sees this final image that is in fact virtual but is now much much larger and easier to see. So a couple of details here. First off, we're going to get an image distance di1. That'll be the distance of the first image. 
this is not suddenly the object distance to the second because we need to measure the distance from that image to the lens. And in order to do that, we'll need to use the distance between the lenses. That's usually what's specified. We'll see how that works in practice in just a moment. So that becomes the object distance, which you can measure. And then your final image distance uh, will be relative to the second lens. So that gives you an overview. For the overall magnification, it's just the magnification of the first lens times the magnification of the second lens. It's a product of the two. So let's look at an example of this with a microscope, which was what the previous one was. Okay, good. So we can go through the math of what we just saw with the ray diagram. So this example matches the previous slide. So it says the objective and eyepiece of the compound microscope are both converging lenses and have focal lengths of FO is 15 millimeters and FE is 25.5 millimeters. A distance of 61 millimeters separates the lenses. The microscope is being used to examine an object placed DO1 uh, equal to 24.1 millimeters in front of the objective. Find the final image distance. All right. Well, let's see if we can sketch this out. And I'm not going to try to solve this one with the detailed to scale ray diagram, because that would be a lot of really careful measuring and I'd need a much larger whiteboard. Though you could do that. It's not that we are unable to. It's just pretty involved here. But I do want to sketch what we have going on. So I'll fill in the principal axis and even put in an eye over here. Right, that's the eye looking at it. And we see that we have the um, objective and eyepiece. So we have those two things. They also mention the focal lengths, the distance between them, and the object distance uh, in front of the objective. So since I'm sketching, I'll try to fill some of that in. And I'll stop sharing so that you can see a little more of the whiteboard. OK, so it tells us the distance between them is this 61 millimeters. And it also gives us um, the focal lengths. So FO is 15. Millimeters and F. And the focal length of the eyepiece is 25 and a half. And then it tells us the object distance is 24.1 millimeters in front of the objective. So that's my object, and we can note that based upon my uh, focal length of the objective, my objective's focal length is something like 15. So that would be around there. Where I'm just sketching this, this is not to scale. But our object is outside of the focal length, but inside two times the focal length. So we can know, OK, that tells us about what we're going to produce, right? That since we're in between the focal point and two times the focal point, the image is going to be more than twice the focal point away, focal distance away. It should be real and inverted and larger. Cool. So that's useful to note that from this, we expect to get a real image. And I'm, again, just going to sketch it out that we have some sort of real image here that is inverted. So that's my I1. 
So the image just from lens one that we've produced. Right. So we ultimately want to find the final image distance. Which, yeah, we'll, before I try and even draw that in, I want to first figure out where I1 is, where the first image is. So to do that, I'm going to look back at my uh, thin lens equation. So thin lens equation is just the, the 1 over do plus 1 over di is equal to 1 over f. And so I'm going to do it for lens number 1 first. And so for lens number one, I'm solving for the image distance one. So one over di one is equal to one over the focal length of the objective fo minus one over do one. So we'd have that this is one over 15. And I'm gonna work in terms of millimeters because as long as I'm consistent, everything will be fine in terms of millimeters. 1 over 15 minus 1 over the 24.1 millimeters. And if I want to get it in terms of di1, then I'm going to need to take the inverse of all of that to raise it to the first power. And so if you do that, you should be able to get on your calculator 39.7 millimeters. So that's this distance here, again, my picture is not to scale. And I apologize for that. Now, in order to know what the eyepiece is gonna do, what our second lens is gonna do, we need to know how close our image is, which is gonna be the object of the eyepiece. So we need to find that object distance. So for the second half, I'm going to switch colors, maybe to blue. This distance is going to be object two, DO2. And we can get that object distance by noting that the image distance of one plus the object distance of two have to equal that 61 meters. So DI1 plus DO2 have to equal 61 millimeters. Or in other words, DO2 is equal to 61 millimeters minus DI1, 39.7 millimeters. And so if we're subtracting those, it should come out to about 20, yes, 21.3. And that now gives us our object distance for um, the second lens. And if we want to find our final image distance, we can plug and chug into that same equation. Before we do that, I do want to check how does this object distance compare with my focal length of the eyepiece? Because what if I know what to expect, then I can know if I made a mistake in plugging into the equation. So looking at this, this is in fact less than my eyepiece. So because it's at a distance less than the eyepiece, I expect that my converging lens is going to produce a virtual image, just like we saw on the last slide. So the final, final, final image, the second image, is in fact gonna be somewhere out beyond. And so this will be at some distance di2 that we can solve for, as long as I make sure we still have enough room on the whiteboard. So we'll go down a little more and see if we can't get this in here. So di2, using my equation from before, is going to be equal to one over the focal length of not the objective, oops, but of the eyepiece, minus one over do2, and then inversed. I was doing a lot there at once and I almost made a big mistake. So be forewarned, it's easy to make mistakes on these. So we know both those numbers, so we can now plug and chug. 
So this is equal to one over Fe, which is 25.5. And it is positive because it's a converging lens, minus one over DO2, this 21.3 millimeters. An inverse to the negative one, sorry, that's getting really low down there, but you should find when you get this, that you get a negative number, that you get negative 130 right up here, so it's less small. So DI2 is negative 130 millimeters. Now, why is it negative? Well, it's negative because it's virtual, right? When we're looking with our eyes, it's not forming a real image but it's something that we have to look through the eyepiece in order to be able to observe this image. And it is at a distance of 130 millimeters to the left of the eyepiece. So I'll share the screen so you can see the neater writing of the solutions. So here's our final slide that shows all the steps as mentioned and that the final image distance is indeed negative 130 millimeters. So there we have it. Lenses in combination, just a one-two punch. Take it one step at a time and you will get there.